Michael Crichton came up with the idea of the Gell-Mann effect. And it's very, very simple. It's an effect whereby you read a newspaper or some other source of information about something that you know very, very well. Uh, whatever it is, it doesn't really matter what the, the subject might be, but you know it exceptionally well. And you read the story in the mainstream news organs uh, uh, reporting, you know, a newspaper or web page or, you know, on cable, it doesn't matter. And you read it, hear it, see it, and you're like, dude, they are completely wrong about what's going on. I mean, they are completely wrong. They, they are focusing on things that are trivial. They are ignoring things that are really important. Uh, you, you know, sometimes you, you read a story like that and you realize that they get the cause and effect backwards. Michael Crichton called it, you know, the, the effect of, you know, the, the wet streets cause rain effect, where literally the cause and effect are reversed in, you know, some news story. And you see this all the time. I mean, I've been paying attention to news uh, stories about Chile since I was, I don't know, 16, 15, 16 years old. And I remember, you know, reading stuff about Chile, and I was like, this is completely wrong. And at the time, I was against the Pinochet dictatorship, but the things that they would be saying about the Pinochet dictatorship were just completely wrong because I was there. And I was like, what are you talking about? This is not happening. This other thing is happening, but this here that you're saying is happening, and you're saying it's so important, it's not happening. Nobody cares about it. It's this thing over there, here, this, this, this. They would ignore it. And, well, the Gelman effect is, of course, that you read something or see something or hear something in the mainstream media and you know it's wrong, but then you turn to the next article in that same news source and assume automatically that it's correct. You see? Your bias is making you think that the other stories in the news organization are correct even though the one thing that you do know, or perhaps the two things that you do know that appear in that news source are completely wrong. It's very hard to get out from under this bias. It's very hard to realize that if a news organization is presenting one piece of information and you know for a fact that it's wrong, then the other stuff that they're presenting is probably wrong too. In my own case, what happened was that, you know, I would read stuff about Chile. They'd talk about Chile, they were completely wrong, and this was like in the 80s, you know, pre the end of apartheid, and they were always talking about South Africa and Nelson Mandela, what a lovely guy he was, and he was in prison, and, you know, bad South Africans and apartheid bad, and, you know, evil whites and blah, 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 right? And it got me thinking at the time that, you know, if they're telling bullshit about Chile, where I'm at, are they telling me the truth about South Africa? I mean, I realized retrospectively that I was very lucky that I had that mentality. I avoided the Gelman effect. I avoided that trap, that perceptual trap, of thinking that the other stories in the official-looking mainstream source must be correct. And I, I acknowledge, I, I don't know what it was exactly that led me to conclude that if they're wrong about Chile, they're probably wrong about South Africa, and it's a lot more complicated or a lot different than what they're telling me. But I came to that conclusion. And so the whole, you know, end apartheid sit stuff, you know, I never really bought it. Mm -hmm. Not because I have, you know, anything in favor of apartheid. It simply, you know, I thought, well, they're saying such lies and bullshit about Chile, and the stuff that they're telling me about South Africa, South Africa it can't be like they're telling me. You know in news sources that you're reading now on Fox, CNN, New York Times, Washington Post, you know, anything from coming out of Europe, you know, the English press and whatnot, the French press, you all know that the stories they tell about things that you know are wrong. And I'm telling you that whenever they talk about Ukraine and the Ukrainian situation, they're dead wrong. Almost every time. The mainstream media right now in the United States and in Europe is focusing on Snake Island. Snake Island was insignificant, and it was a complete fiasco insofar as the Ukrainians are concerned. They lost 60 frontline experienced paratroopers over this bullshit of this fucking island that means militarily nothing. And yet all the mainstream media in Europe, in the United States, is essentially lying. They're telling you things about Snake Island that are just simply not true. The Ministry of Defense of Great Britain 
said things that are diametrically opposite to the actual result. They claimed that the whole Snake Island fiasco was a great Ukrainian victory. It was a great Ukrainian catastrophe. It was a fiasco. And yet they are spinning the exact opposite. Now, why am I telling you this? Well, because, you see, here in Ukraine, the war is winding down. It might be hard to believe for a lot of people, but it is. Because the outcome is inevitable. And everybody who's got, you know, uh, two neurons to rub together here in Ukraine is preparing for what's to come next. Because the armed forces of Ukraine, for all their bravery and heroism, and nobody's disputing that, they're losing catastrophically. They have their commanders that are fleeing the front and just slipping into civilian clothes and getting as far away as possible from combat. You have a lot of the leadership making off with a lot of money and pressuring their Western backers to get them a lot of money so that they can uh, live high on the hog in Italy and Miami once this whole fiasco you know, falls apart because that's what's happening right now. The whole Ukrainian situation is collapsing. The Russians are successfully grinding down the Ukrainian armed force. And it's this relentless grinding every day, grinding and grinding with relentless artillery. And the Ukrainian armed forces, they have nothing to respond. They, they cannot respond. And there's been talk, bullshit talk again, about, you know, the great Kharkov offensive. I'm in fucking Kharkov right the fuck now. And I can tell you, there was no fucking Ukrainian Kharkov offensive. The Russians simply pulled back and straightened out their line in response to, uh, you know, intermittent shelling. It wasn't a big retreat. They just tactically pulled back, straightened out their line, all good. And the Ukrainian armed forces moved forward into abandoned territory and called it a victory. The way, same way they talked about how when the Russian armed forces retreated from around uh, uh, Kiev, they called it a retreat when it was just a withdrawal, a strategic withdrawal. They called it a retreat, but they rolled in two days later. There was no battle for Kiev. They just took over land that the Russians had abandoned, man. But that's the kind of bullshit that is being spewed out there in the Western media. And see, you don't know any better. I do. And I'm telling you, man. And this war isn't going to last much longer. Not at the rate it's going. The Ukraine armed forces are coming close to that moment, that moment of collapse, because no armed force can withstand what's been going on to it. It's been hit. It's been annihilated. It's being annihilated. And it is, as far as I'm concerned, a disaster. It is a humanitarian disaster because all of these young men, and some of them now not so young men, they are getting killed at a rate of at least 500 men per day for nothing. This is a disaster. But this is what's happening. Don't fall for the Gelman effect. Understand that the news sources that you are reading in the West are lying to you. And you know that they are, because when they talk about what you know, you know how incorrect they are. You have to find news sources that when they talk about what you know, they're more or less on the ball. Those are the people you can trust. But all the CNNs, the MSNBCs, the New York Times, the Washington Post, all of them, they are lying to you for political reasons. Understand. And the political reasons boil down to money. They want to get as much money as possible to all the various players of this war. That's what's going on. 